Coming up on Texas Parks and Wildlife. This right hand turn is just perfect for any flounder. It's an ambush spot for an ambush predator. It was about six or eight months ago, the last time we had any significant rainfall. It's all about water out here, preserving and directing it to your benefit. My main reason for being part of this group is to do the things that I like to do with other people that like to do that stuff. If I'd been doing this by myself, I wouldn't have had near as much fun. Texas Parks and Wildlife, a television series for all outdoors. This series is funded in part by a grant from the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program. Through your purchase of hunting and fishing equipment and motorboat fuels, over $40 million in conservation efforts are funded in Texas each year. Additional funding provided by Ram Trucks, Guts, Glory, Ram. It's sunrise on Chocolate Bayou in West Galveston Bay. Brian Treadway. Oh. Mm, that was money right there. And Robert Goode focus their fishing efforts on flounder. Chocolate Bayou is an uh, is excellent spot for flounder. It's really, we have one of the shallowest bays in all the coast. And, and really and truly, we have the absolute best place to fish in the world right in our own backyard. I think I've got a hit. Fish on, fish on. And it doesn't take long before Brian catches the first flounder of the day. I give you the southern flounder. Love to be about six years of age and can get up to 10 pounds. The state record's 13 pounds. So a 20 inch flounder is considered a trophy fish. Their flattened shape and uncanny ability to change colors to match their surroundings makes the flounder nearly invisible. Found throughout Texas bays and in the Gulf, where they spawn in winter, they prefer shallow mud or sandy bottoms. The edge of the shoreline is a prime example of what you want to fish. It's not flat. It's Simply curvy and lots of points, lots of edges, drains that are coming out of the marsh. It's just a prime example of great, great terrain for the flounder. There's a fish. Oh, got one. There he is. Bambino. Got a juvenile, about 10, 12 inches long. Yeah, they got. They have extremely, extremely sharp teeth. That's their main weapon, baby southern flounder. Once night falls on Texas bays. See anything, Co? Not right now. Folks have a different way of going after flounder. Co Parker and his dad, Kelly, shine their lights in Christmas Bay. Oh, shoot. Stepped on him. Stepped on him. I missed him. Let me see if I can find another one real quick. I saw a few over here. With lights and a little luck, the Parkers are looking to gig some flounder. The tools you need for gigging are uh, a good gig, two-prong preferably. Um, I have mine marked off with uh, the legal size limit. Um, you have an underwater gig light along with a 12-volt uh, uh, deer feeder battery. And that's pretty much all you need. It's gotten clear up here, but I'm, it's awful shallow too. Typically I do this in the summertime. 
And so late in the evening, it's nice and cool. I'm not worried about a sunburn, so it's relaxing. You aren't working up a sweat. It's just, it's just very enjoyable, very peaceful. And for the Parkers, patience and a keen eye pay off. Hurry, 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 hurry before it goes. The cloud's going to get over it. Go. Yeah, there you go. That actually looks like a gold flounder. I knew there was one hiding out here somewhere. Yeah, they're very hard to find. And a lot of people, first time gigging, ask what they're looking for. And literally, you're looking for what we call the imprint. It's the outline of the flounder. So it looks like a football with a tail. That's how I kind of describe it to new people that are coming out to the sport. Sampling surveys throughout Texas bays got a few nice reds coming. show that the other two popular sport fish, spotted sea trout and redfish, are doing fairly well. 493. But those surveys do indicate a decline in the numbers of southern flounder. Pretty. We've had a slow but steady decrease in flounder population throughout the coast of Texas. There's been worse in some bays than it has in others, but it's just been a slow decline. Data suggests a lower number of females, overfishing, and loss due to shrimp bycatch are some of the main problems. So now, Coastal Fish Hatchery's newest challenge is to boost the southern flounder population. The whole point of the stock enhancement program is to be able to supplement the natural population with fish. There come some eggs. Flounder are totally different from redfish and trout. It's a whole new ball game. So we're at the beginning stages of uh, learning how to culture this fish. One of the problems for Shane and the stocking team is they need more of these male brooders to fertilize the females. They're almost always next to these reefs. Using nets, the stocking team is on the lookout. A little bit deeper here. You have so many factors that can go against you, whether it's the wind or a strong tide. And then, of course, the visibility is not optimal. I try to look for a triangle because, like, it's the eyes and the nose. They kind of form like a little, little bitty point that I'm looking for. And it doesn't take long before the action heats up. Oh! I'm going to guide the boat to it. Hard down. There you go. Did I get him? But I think you got him. Hmm. That's a nice fish. I was nervous. I always think I got them until they swim off. <laughs> Bring that little fellow in here. <laughs> that is a good sized male. Go ahead. Got him. The team needs several males alive and well. When you come out here and catch one of these guys and put your hands on them and know that you're going to take these back to the hatchery and uh, they're potentially going to produce thousands and thousands of fingerlings. You can't explain it, you can't put a price on it. So we're very happy to, to be able to do this and, and be productive at doing it. Nice work. There's a little bit of uh, milt coming out. It's just that cloudy, uh, whitish looking substance. With more brooders back at the hatchery, they are able to produce thousands of small flounder larvae. After three months, it's time to help boost the wild population with these hatchery-raised flounder. What we're going to do is release some of these fingerlings into this nice estuarine habitat. We've got a really good incoming tide and really good shoreline with a lot of grass, a lot of cover and protection for these fish. If we're able to stock fish into areas that are needed, then that is just another additional tool that can help the population recover. It's a beautiful thing. Caught a lot of fish over the years. Right? Get it. For Brian and Robert, the thrill of catching <laughs> flounder keeps them fishing all day, all year long. What a nice one. And hopefully for all anglers, these fish will be plentiful again. The way they're shaped, they're really flat and it goes from just being nothing and then it's like a bass. I think that flounder's on a huge upswing and they're starting to let them go. I mean, they let a ton go last year uh, in places that needed it. You know, if they can do it with a trout and redfish, then hopefully they can do it with a flounder.
I think they're so pretty. And they're just happily eating at that feeder, aren't they? They certainly aren't frightened by us. There they go off. My great-grandfather came to this county in 1883. This is Betty Tanksley. He acquired ranch land and cattle. That was how the family ended up in Brewster County, Texas. Betty and her husband, Ben, took over the family's 25,000-acre ranch in 1989. Ben passed away in November of 2013, but during his time on the ranch, he reshaped the land in a way to make the most of one of the region's scarcest resources. It was about six or eight months ago the last time we had any significant rainfall. We had a little bit of rain about a month ago, but only about two tenths. It's all about water out here, preserving and directing it to your benefit. With the goal of capturing and managing water, Ben built dirt tanks, diversion dams, and developed an intricate irrigation system to move water all over the ranch. The water in this reservoir comes from Jack's Reservoir over there. We're pumping it over there, and it's gravity flowing from Jack's Reservoir to here. And then from here, it's gravity flowing to the water troughs that are down below us. We're using just a couple of wells to water basically the whole north side of the ranch. Ben's vision was to preserve water and to direct the water to the benefit of the ranch. He was building some small dams and some large dams and did a lot of what we call divots. A little small defilades. The divots capture rainfall and allow water to penetrate the soil. The tank sleeves use a native grass mix to receive the areas cleared with divots. Ben's innovative technique has successfully grown grass all over the ranch. Now we just pray for rain. Yep. You know, we're recognizing the tank sleeves for this award, not because they did a great job of implementing lots of things that, that we recommended at Parks and Wildlife. Uh, the roles are really kind of flipped in this situation. We've been able to take things we've learned that Ben was willing to try and share that information with other landowners who are interested in, in accomplishing similar goals. Oh, look, okay. there's an antelope right there. Oh, it sure is an antelope there. He's looking for this green grass that's in this divot. So while the tanks leaves wait for rain, the ranch's other residents appreciate the work they've already done. Everything does have a purpose out here, and our purpose is to preserve and protect and improve the land. We hope to continue with the improving of the land so that all of us will hand it down to the next generation better than it was when we took over. Find a good spot back here. Oh. Load the truck. Lots of fun. Bill Talbot and his friend John Dukes are going camping. It's going out to Big Bend National Park. And they're packing a lot of stuff. Yeah. This is the dirty work. This is how the sausage is made. Behind the scenes peak. <laughs> we'll try. Let's do this. And we're off. It's off the Big Bend we go. This will be our ninth annual trip out there. We keep going back because it's just an amazing place. Tons to explore. Just taking in the, the awesomeness that is the Big Bend part of Texas. 
Now, Bill didn't load that trailer just for himself and a couple of friends, their friends and more. Almost 50 folks in all are camping with Bill's club, Hill Country Outdoors. Hi, Mom. It's a pretty active group. Every year, it's always probably a third to a half of the group are newbies who've never been out here before, so it's pretty awesome to see their eyes just uh, open wide when they get out here and check out this incredible spot we're in. Tent camping in the mountains can take some getting used to. The ground's kind of hard, and it was a little cold. But that's what the coffee is for. Much better. Something warm. <laughs> the hash browns. Yeah, do another batch of eggs if you got those going. After fueling up, the campers have plenty of options. Tons of hikes, lots of hikes. What are you all doing today? All right, here we go. We're doing the Lost Mines Trail. Don't fall. <laughs> can I see my truck from here? <laughs> my main reason for being part of this group is to do the things that I like to do with other people that like to do that stuff. <laughs> All the laughter up and down this hill today is because of the people. One small step for mankind. No, no, something like that. If I'd been doing this by myself, I wouldn't have had near as much fun. <laughs> there's a photo op every 10 feet, so there's lots of breaks. Casa Grande. Wow. That's pretty. There we go. That's gorgeous. Ken Harris is a Big Bend veteran, having made all nine trips with Hill Country Outdoors. We're in the home stretch. As for Margaret Dean. I'm not an experienced hiker, obviously. This is all a little new. I'm going camping and hiking for the first time. That makes reaching the summit all the more rewarding. High five. <laughs> Maybe a high 10. <laughs> it's fabulous. Just fabulous. Top of the world. This is a doozy to pick as your first camp out, but the views are spectacular and the payout's worth it. For those less interested in scaling mountain peaks, Hill Country Outdoors offers plenty of camping and hiking closer to home, like in the Hill Country. We see a few turkeys. We are out here in part to see the turkeys. About five of them out there. But uh, some people came along who wanted to do some canoeing and kayaking, so it's pretty laid back. Some of them came out to hike. I came out here to paddle on the South Atlantic. The canoeing and some of the stuff is a little bit beyond the comfort zone for a lot of the members. So it's always nice to have somebody with you who knows what they're doing. This beautiful, beautiful river. Prior to joining the, the club a few months ago, I didn't have any paddling experience. This is a club that's full of those type of activities. I don't get bored with it because there's just such a diversity to choose from. The club's calendar lists multiple events each day of the week. With affiliated clubs in other cities, members have recreation options around the state and beyond. And the internet's making all of this possible, really. It, it helps share the information of what you need to do, meet here, show up with this, plan on this amount of time. Without the internet, none of this would happen. Free services, like meetup.com, are making it easier for folks with specific interests to join group activities. Outdoor clubs like Hill Country charge fees, but tend to offer more organized events. Someone else does all the organizing, someone like me. We'll take care of all the logistics and all the pain in the rear stuff, and you just kind of show up and have fun. Underwater, when we're scuba diving, we, we want to be what's called neutrally buoyant. It makes it easier to just you know, touch your toe in a little bit. We want to be swimming along in the water column. Today, I learned to scuba dive. I was a little worried about going underwater and breathing, because uh, that just seems completely not right to me. <laughs> I've been kind of crossing off my list things I'm scared to do, or things that I want to do, but I'm a little mm, about. So this was one of those things. I was like, OK, I did that. I feel good. I feel good about myself. Yeah. Nicely done. That's kind of the whole spirit behind this club is try things you want to do but are a little bit nervous doing on your own. So it's nice to have a, a, a built-in support group to try these kind of events with. All right. Woo! All right. We did the zip line and that was great. Woo! Woo I 
don't recommend anybody do this. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm with Bayou City Outdoors in Houston, and then there's Hill Country Outdoor Group that's here. They all play well with others. It was so fun. Awesome. Like a pro. You're good, brother. Seeing everyone having fun and smiling <laughs> doesn't get much better. It's fun! Of course, outdoor clubs aren't all high adventure. Wow, awesome. A lot of it's also just hanging out and talking and cooking dinner or trying to cook dinner, sitting around a campfire. That was about six months ago when I was younger. <laughs> There's a whole side that's sometimes jokingly called Hill Country Indoors. We uh, meet for dinners, we go out for uh, drinks. In general, most people leave, you know, Thursday In fact, morning, much yeah. of the preparation for that Big Ben trip was disguised as a social hour at a local pub. Something always goes wrong every year, but I, I won't tell you what, because that's half the fun. <laughs> but except for some aching ankles and toes. Just put a couple bandages on it so it won't hurt so much. <laughs> This trip is coming off without a hitch. As the weekend draws to a close, hikers and bikers head for the trails of Big Bend Ranch State Park for more exploring. Oh, good rusty gate. Still have a day job, but it is a business. Vamanos! It's a for-profit. I jokingly say, if you ask my account, it looks like a non-profit more times than not, but I've always been the party organizer, and so it just kind of comes naturally to me. And plus, I just love the outdoors. This trip is 140 bucks, I guess is what it costs. That's 12 meals included and planned activities every day, so. That looks pretty. Hard to do a trip for four or five days on that price, so it we think it's a pretty good deal. You guys okay? I already know Bill doesn't make a lot of money out of it. A lot of the reason he does it is because he enjoys it as well. I'm 66. When I'm out here, I feel their age. You got young and old, you've got people from all backgrounds, all stripes, but there's something inside of them that knows they need to be doing more of this. And for folks like Ken, this club is more than a way to get outdoors on the weekends. I had a personal tragedy a few years ago, and my friends from Hill Country Outdoor, they, they made the difference for me. They, they saved my life. My best friends today to Ken, our tour guide. are people that I've met in Hill Country Outdoor. And I continue to participate and make new friends. It's the last day in Big Ben, and the campers clean up, pack up, and say their farewell. See you next time. I'm sad. I'm sad to go home. I will definitely go on another HCO trip, maybe next year, Big Ben again. I'm sure there'll be another one. Weekend was awesome. It was great. I think everyone had a great time. Uh, everyone ate really well. Got some really good long hikes in. Yeah, come on, everybody. Let's go. It's a little sad. We do it right here. It's good, actually. There's a lot of bonding. Squeeze in. Come on. We got nothing but love in here. One, two, three. And then suddenly it comes to an abrupt end. Here we go. One more. And, uh, it's a lot of fun. All right, here we go. So this story ends much as it began. Another trip in the book. But the outdoor club story is never really over. Got a trailer behind us? That's a nice thing. Bye, Mom. This week's calendar includes 20 new adventures to choose from. Every time it's something new.
This series is funded in part by a grant from the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program. Through your purchase of hunting and fishing equipment and motorboat fuels, over $40 million in conservation efforts are funded in Texas each year. Additional funding provided by Ram Trucks. Guts. Glory. Ram.